Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I want to tell you about the Cinelog 30 from GEP RC. I've been flying it for about two weeks now, and I have to say it's my favorite Cinewhoop I've ever flown. Stay tuned. <laughs> First of all, I want to say if you're not already subscribed to Ready, Set, Drone, please hit the subscribe button. We're going to do a lot of videos about Cinewhoops because I'm getting into flying them, and this one is super fantastic. It is the GEPRC Cinelog 30, and it's a very small, lightweight, and differently designed kind of Cinewhoop. Now, if you're not familiar with Cinewhoops, they are FPV drones, typically with ducted or guarded propellers that allow them to fly and do cinematic video using either a GoPro or a naked GoPro or a uh, naked Insta360 or an Insta360 Go. There's a lot of different options. I've been flying this one with the Insta360 Go 2. Um, I had to do a little bit of modification up here to the top in order to make it fly properly because when I crashed it the first time, these little um, rubber things that give it some shock absorption came out. So I used some zip ties to hold them back in place and make sure they wouldn't pop out again. And then I've zip tied a GoPro mount on top of this. It comes with a mount for a naked GoPro, but this is a typical GoPro mount that I have set up for my Insta360 Go 2, which takes amazing stabilized video on top of this thing. So the GEPRC Cinelog 30 is the big brother to the Cinelog 25 that came out a few months ago. It's a three inch sub 250 gram, and that means 158 grams without the battery. So depending on the type of battery, you can be quite a bit under 250 grams or right at 250 grams or even over with a big enough battery. They recommend a 650 milliamp battery to get it right at that 250 gram and get it get the most flight time. It's 126 millimeters motor to motor, and it has two inch carbon fiber plates on the top and bottom, as well as three inch carbon fiber on the arms. It uses 1404 3850 kV motors, and it's designed as a pusher, meaning that the motors are actually mounted upside down and push it up instead of pulling like a normal motor, which is an interesting design, and I think really great for Cinewhoops. So one of my favorite things about it is it comes with the new Cadex Vista Polar Starlight camera. Now this camera is designed with a very wide aperture, 1.8 uh, f-stop aperture, I believe, and it is designed to fly in low light and absorb a lot of light. And I've done that and it's actually quite amazing. Now some people have some issues with this camera because some of the settings on it are limited. You can only fly in 16.9. It's not easy to change the brightness or the contrast. You have to have a little dongle that you hook up to the Vista unit to, to be able to do that. Um, but for me, I typically fly in 16.9 anyway, and I feel like the contrast and brightness settings are just fine the way they are. But the low light capabilities are what make this camera amazing. Uh, as you can tell, hopefully you can tell, it is dark. It is night. Night is here. And we're trying out the Cinelog 30 with the Polar, Cadex Polar camera, which has high gain for nighttime flying. And so, oh my goodness, yes, it looks like daytime. It's very grainy, but it looks like grainy daytime. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this just got to its full brightness, and the, uh, the goggles aren't even on full brightness for sure. All right, so here we go. Okay, so it's definitely grainy. Like, I can see just grain along the fence, and, uh, yeah, it's it's very grainy, but it is very visible. I mean, it's, like, you can't really see the details in the field like you normally can, but you can definitely see everything. I mean, I can see where the fence is. I can see where the trees are. I can see the lights of the school over there. Matter of fact, I'm going to go that direction over towards the lights. Wow, yeah, I mean, those lights look so bright.
Look at that. There aren't any parking lot lights in here, but the, the surface of the um, parking lot is is pretty bright because it is um, you know bright color. Don't hit the cars. And this thing it also flies a lot. Well, I can feel the difference since I don't have the uh, Insta360 on it. I could imagine with the naked GoPro it would actually feel um, even more bogged down than it does with this uh, Insta360 Go 2 on it. But right now it doesn't have anything on it and it feels very light and nimble. Yeah, so I got a lot of breakup right there just now when I went out over the field. So I guess, I guess that big patch of green from the grass is really um, kind of messing with it. But yeah, I'm going along the track. Uh, right in front of the bathroom there where where there's lights. There's lights over by the school here going around this tree I'm Gonna dip down through the little patio here Yep, there's a car with its headlights on Go over us here over the trees Yeah. And how dark is it, Chris? Is it even darker? It's even darker. Yeah. How, what is it on the darkness meter? <laughs> um, one out of ten. Ten being the darkest, probably uh, seven. Wow. I think I think I. I don't know if you know this. I used to be a camp counselor at a camp in the Ozarks in Missouri. And uh, we would go into this cave and we would always tell the kids it was like the fourth darkest cave in the US. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, but you could you could fly, well, you maybe couldn't fly in the fourth darkest cave in the US, but you could definitely fly uh, right now and at night and under this tree and doing just fine. Yeah, it's very it's very grainy. There's lots of breakup. Uh, not breakup even. It's just grain, just just pixelation. But it's again, I, I can see these trees. I can see, I can see myself. I can see you. I can see uh, everything that I need to see in order to fly past it. And then when you get over here, with a little more light, uh, still pretty grainy. Oop, there's some kids out on the field. All right, I'm getting a low battery warning. Bring it in. All right, I saw headlights of a car going by. Wow, okay, I'm about to reveal myself how dark it is. Oh, oh, oh. see when I put these on, it wasn't this dark. Wow, yes, it is very dark out here. This whole video is just gonna be us in the black and and uh, I, like, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to pick up all my stuff because I didn't bring a flashlight. So uh, that camera is amazing. Let me just, again, see if you can see it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is just astounding. That is so cool. And you know where that would also be a really cool thing is if you were doing, uh, like an indoor uh, Cinewhoop kind of thing through a building and there were dark patches and light patches You could go into those dark patches without losing it. Yeah, that's awesome. All right Well, I'm getting bit by mosquitoes. So I think it's time to go So in addition to being a great platform for flying with an action camera One of the things I love about this is it's very agile these little bumpers around the motors are less like ducks and more like bumpers they have a kind of a rubber padding on the outside. They come with some extra rubber padding that you can pull on and off in red and gray are the two colors. And they don't really inhibit it nearly as much as some other bigger ducted quads might. You feel like you're flying an open, uh, open prop quad with these little tri-blades. It gets up and goes pretty well for a quad with this much protection around it. Okay, so I'm here at the school in Alexandria Bay, New York. Big open spot, there's a big field over there. My son and his friend are playing basketball. And I'm gonna just kind of rip around here in the parking lot a little bit and see how it goes. With the Cinelog 30 right there.
As I said before, I feel like GetRC generally makes really high quality quads that are pretty much bind and fly and ready to go right out of the box with great tuning, with great components, great designs. Probably the only design uh, thing I would change about this, well, there's really two things. Number one, again, the fact that the Vista unit is always so hard to get to initially when you want to activate it is a little bit of a pain, but it's not a huge deal. I was able to take off uh, four screws on the bottom <laughs> and there goes my dog and uh, connect to it pretty easily. And then the second thing that I would definitely change is these little bumpers here. They come off easily when you crash, when you have a camera connected to it, because there's a lot of torque if you crash. And with the Insta360 Go sticking right up, it just pulled them right out. So like I said, when it crashed, these little uh, rubber things all came out of the back. And so now what I'm trying to do is push them back in. And I'm not really good at that. Like something that there's three of them, not even sure how I'm gonna get the center one in because I can't even hardly reach it. I guess I could take the battery off. That might help. Yeah, okay, now I can see it a little bit better. Let's see, so there's the three. Let's see if I can push it down with this flathead screwdriver. All right, so I couldn't get the, um, I couldn't get the little rubber things to go back through. And so what I'm doing now is I'm using really thin zip ties to actually just hold it down like that so it can't come out again and I'll cut that. So let's see if I can do the same thing over here on this side. All right, there we go. Now the two uh, rubber things are held down with these zip ties. I'm gonna clip, could just leave them. They look kind of cool, <laughs> like little, little antennas. So as you can see from the footage, this thing's a ton of fun to fly. It is great for flying around in tight spots. Um, I feel like it would be great for flying indoors in a fairly large indoor space. You wouldn't want to fly this in a tiny house or anything like that with a 4S. But generally, it's just a ton of fun to fly. It's very responsive. And if you're looking for a Cinewhoop or even just a, a ducted quad that you can fly in low light because of the polar camera, this is really a great choice. Love to hear your comments about the GEP RC Cinelog 30. Comment below, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time on Ready Set Drone. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Look at that. Wow, oh, all the lights around my house are almost too bright. Oh, and there is a fox. Definitely cruise down the street a little bit. Get out of the street, I hear a car coming. down at the end of the street. Kind of high. Wow. That's pretty cool being able to see. It is dark, 
dark, dark outside. And the only reason I'm able to do this is because there's street lights and the lights on my house. Here comes the car, it sounds like. You can even see the lines of those, uh, the tree, uh, the things holding up the tree. Wow. Yeah, it's dark, but it can fly just fine. <laughs>